The following video is not suited for children. Ah, hello there. I see you've returned for another Christmas story. Well, this year I thought I'd tell you the tale of a Christmas carol. So, are you all sat comfortably? Good, then let's begin. <coughs> Twas the eve before Christmas in old London town. Christmas joy buzzing in the streets and flowing all around. And while the joy was plentiful, there was just one stooge, a grumpy old loan shark by the name of Ebenezer Scrooge. With his helper Bob Cratchit, they worked into the night, with little to aid them but the dim candlelight. Excuse me, sir, it's seven o'clock and my work is now done. May I go home to my family and enjoy the Christmas fun? A and get me wages and have tomorrow off too. I I'm sure it's not a big problem for someone like you. It bloody is, snapped Scrooge. Don't you forget, I need help tomorrow going around and collecting the debts. Oh, please, sir, begged Bob. It's just for Christmas Day. Fine, grumbled Scrooge. Take your 15 shillings and be on your way. But I want you in the day after that earlier than ever. No paid overtime. That's what you get for acting so clever. Bob grabbed his hat, his coat, and ran off back home, leaving old Scrooge sitting counting money alone. After counting all the money and putting it away, he locked up the shop and went home for the day. On his way back, he saw two men dressed up funny. Oh, bloody hell thought Scrooge. They're going to ask me for money. You, called one man. You're Ebenezer from the office of Marley and Scrooge. You must have a lot of money and hopefully your heart will be huge. The other chimed in. We're collecting for the needy and it's the time of year to share, not to be greedy. Share my earnings? For what, you ignorant louse? If people are poor and cold, they should go to a workhouse. They'll have food and heat. I fund them, I should know. They're just lazy and beg. That's why they don't go. Oh, please, begged one. You can help, you're a banker. Think of those in need. Yeah, no need to be a massive wank. That's enough. A Marley's grave, no. Now to both of you, good day. I want to hear no more of this. Now, leave me on my way. He moved down the streets with Christmas joy all around. Everyone shared smiles and laughs while he just frowned. With turkeys in butcher's windows and vendors selling mulled wine, carol singers singing, people joining in and having a wonderful time. Bah humbug, mumbled Scrooge. It's all just a load of noise. Nothing but an excuse to be lazy and sell more toys. When he got home, he took out his keys and opened the door, when he suddenly got a feeling he had never felt before. A shiver of cold from his head to his toe. Then from the dark came a whisper in a voice he would know. Ebenezer. Scrooge grabbed a candlestick and waved it around, shouting, Who's there? Speak up! But there wasn't a sound. Probably nothing, he thought, and went to his bed. I'm just hearing things. It's all in my head. As he entered the room, the voice came again. Ebenezer Scrooge. He jumped around to see the ghost of his dead friend. J Jacob Marley! It can't be! You died! I know, and I've come to you from the other side. Scrooge dropped to his knees, almost about to cry, shouting, Oh Christ, not now! I'm far too young to die! Jacob rolled his eyes. Oh, stop robbing, you dirty great twat. I'm not here to kill you, I've only come for a chat. Scrooge stood up. Oh, well, is there anything I can do? Maybe get you a drink, old friend, or something to accommodate you. No, said Jacob. I've come to warn you of the pain. This life you are leading is one you must abstain. For your greed and spirit, like mine, is a chain with great weight, one that drags you forever away from heaven's gate. So, to save you from this tonight when the bell tolls, you shall be visited by three Christmas souls. Let them all in and heed their advice, for each of them will help save your miserable life. With that, the spirit of Marley turned and began to fade, leaving Scrooge all alone, confused and afraid. Marley, wait! Please don't go! What's going to happen? I need to know! He called out loud all through the house, but heard nothing back, not even the squeak of a mouse. Scrooge gave up and slipped into bed, reflecting and thinking about what Marley had said. He closed his eyes and began to count sheep, and found very quickly he had fallen asleep. Scrooge slept for a while, when suddenly late in the night, a loud bell rang one and woke him with a fright. Scrooge looked around when his stomach sank with dread. Before him was a ghostly woman at the end of his bed. Who are you? What do you want? How did you get in? He gasped, to which the spirit responded, Fear not, I am the ghost of Christmas past. I wish to take you back and show you Christmas long gone. And maybe then we can see where you went wrong. 
With that, the spirit took Scrooge's hand and whisked him away. Back to many years ago, to an old Christmas day, to a boy in an empty classroom, sat by the window surveying, all the other children outside, in the snow, laughing and playing. You recognize the boy? said the spirit of Christmas past. It's... It's me! My old school! cried Scrooge, looking around aghast. Why aren't you playing, or joining in the fun? I was very awkward, and wasn't liked by anyone. I was only there because my father was cruel. He didn't want to look after me, so he sent me to boarding school. And a few years later, after accepting the abuse, you got a surprise in the form of some news. Then from nowhere, a young girl stepped through the door, saying, Brother, you don't need to stay here anymore. Our father has changed. He's much kinder and loving. He's learned to be nice, no more shouting or shoving. Young Scrooge grabbed all he had, and both went on their way. And both them and their family had a wonderful Christmas day. Unfortunately though, that wasn't the end of your Christmas pain. As on that day five years later, she was hit by a train. Ebenezer tried to keep a solemn look on his face, and said, So what? Let's just get out of this place. Oh no, said the ghost. You have another reason to grieve, because she wasn't the only person you lost on a Christmas Eve. They went to a warehouse full of music, laughter, and cheer, as workers and couples sang and danced around barrels of beer. You remember your first job? Under Mr. Fezziwig, I believe. Yes, oh yes, he held great parties every Christmas Eve. Both of them watched as a young, poorer Ebenezer stood to the side drinking, while everyone else was up dancing and singing. Then a young maiden, with a fresh smell of romance, offered Scrooge her hand and an offer to dance. He finished off his pint as she took off her gloves, and the two stood together together and started to dance as they fell in love. As Scrooge watched, a small tear welled in his eye. The ghost announced, That's sweet, let's see how you fuck up this time. With a snap of her fingers and a sudden bright light, they appeared in an office and saw a miserable sight. There was Scrooge, hunched over counting out money, when in came the maiden holding a ring looking very sorry. Ebenezer, she said handing him the ring with disparage. I no longer wish to take your hand in marriage. Why ever not? I'm starting to get rich. Well, ever since then, you've been acting a bitch. When you were poorer, you spent all your time on me. Now all you do is sit here counting and thinking about money. So I'm leaving you for a man that'll treat me better than you will. Ryan McCrampton. The guy that runs the flour mill. With that, she turned and left Scrooge completely thrown, sat by himself in his office, doomed to spend Christmas alone. Suddenly, in a blink, he was back in his bed, slightly shaken and dizzy, like he'd been hit on the head. He curled up in his blankets and had to admit, looking back now, he was a fool and a git. Curse me! Why was I so obsessed with my wage? That money has brought me no love or joy in my age. Just as he started to let that thought stew, he jumped up again as the bell tolled two. He glanced all around, but there was nobody there. He thought nothing of it, when a wondrous smell filled the air. The smell of fine wines and freshly cooked food, the sound of joyous music playing to lighten his mood. He opened his door, revealing a sight to behold. A large dining table set with plates made of gold and covered with decorations that made it look divine, with a small table to one side with a selection of fine wines. And upon the table was vegetables boiled and roasted, turkey, goose and pheasant, with a large man sat at the end in a throne cheering, Greetings! I'm the ghost of Christmas present! Scrooge, you look tired and walk like you're beat. Come, grab yourself a drink and have something to eat. Scrooge sat down with a glass of Pinot Noir and said, Thank you very much, whoever you are. I appreciate the thanks. The compliment is pleasant. And did I not tell you? I'm the ghost of Christmas present. So what are you here for? What things are you going to show? Why, how everyone is cheerful while you're miserable at home. I'm not miserable, said Scrooge in a sour note. Believe me you are, the spirit said. You're a grumpy old goat. You've the money to throw a party that could please any king. Yet you just sit here counting pennies and not doing a thing. Let me show you what fun you could be having this great night. Come, take my hand and let us take flight. Before Scrooge could get in a question or ask about why, the ghost took his hand, dove out the window, and soared through the sky. The two soon crashed in a big pile of snow, in front of a house that Scrooge seemed to know. Robert Cratchit always seemed full of festive cheer. Peek through the window and see how he's celebrating this year. Scrooge pressed his face against the glass to see. 
the Cratchit family preparing their impoverished feast, the children hanging up paper chains and decor, while Mrs. Cratchit stuffed a pigeon with some bread she found on the floor, Bob Cratchit working hard to make some cheap punch, and the youngest girl tying some decorative holly into a bunch. It's cheap, says Scrooge, but they seem a happy lot. Are you trying to tell me they're not happy with what they've got? Keep watching, said the spirit as it tapped on the glass. You'll get a lesson here you won't learn in any class. Scrooge kept watching as there came a great cheer. One child called, Look, look, Tim's finally here. Little Tim Cratchit came through the door, hopping on his crutch, handing his father a small bag of coins, saying, Sorry, it isn't much. His father smiled and gave Tim a hug. You got all that from carol singing? My boy, I'm proud. Now we can have an extra treat because of your winning. Bob raised the glass and called, A toast to the two men that have helped us the most. Our Tim, a wonderful upcoming choir boy, and Mr. Scrooge, to whom I'm employed. Mrs. Crotchet interrupted, Don't toast him, you dozy cad. He pays you so little we don't owe him one word. Maybe, sighed Bob. Oh well, enough of the chatter. Let's all get back to something that matters. Tim, my boy, would it be so wrong for you to sing us one of your lovely songs? Everyone cheered and little Tim blushed. And very soon, when everyone hushed, Tiny Tim took a deep breath to begin. And Tiny Tim then started to sing. His voice echoed throughout the house and the street and brought a tear to the eye of everyone it would meet. It truly sounded like an angel on earth, a voice far, far richer than any king's worth. Once Tim had sung his last hymn of the day, the family sat around and thought of games they could play. They spent the whole night laughing and cheering, keeping no track of the time in the evening. Scrooge laughed and cheered, watching the games go on. Eventually, the ghost asked, Are you having fun? Oh yes, he smiled. You bet your hat, mister. I've not seen games like this since Fizzlewig or my... Sister, the ghost patted Scrooge's shoulder and shook his head, saying, Well, I think you should be back off to bed. Wait, cried Scrooge, what of the boy whose name's Tim? What do you care what happens to him? Well, he's sick. Surely that should deserve some thought. The ghost responded coldly, Are you trying to tell me they're not happy with what they've got? Scrooge's face turned pale when he realized what he had said, to which the spirit boomed, Now, back off to your bed! Scrooge jumped awake, finding himself on his dining room floor. He let out a sob. All right, I get it. Please, no more. He then picked himself up when the bell tolled three. He wondered aloud, Now what awaits me? Scrooge made his way back to his bed. When he opened the door, the sight filled him with dread. A tall, looming figure was waiting for him. Lifting a slender arm, they beckoned him in. Uh, are you the next ghost that's come to visit me? I'm guessing to show me the future. I is that what I'll see? The ghost slowly nodded and whisked Scrooge away to show what awaited him a next Christmas day. They arrived in the market when a voice loudly said, Everyone! Hey everyone! The old wretch is dead! No need to worry about paying back your debts or interests. This Christmas, I say, we've all truly been blessed. The people were cheering and danced up and down stairs. Someone even shouted, The Lord has answered our prayers. Scrooge grumbled, Who's this old man and why should I care? We're not after him, we're after my future here. The ghost remained silent and stared back at him. Then Scrooge realized, Hold on, what about Tim? The ghost snapped its fingers and took them to the window where old Scrooge was spying. Inside, Mrs. Crotchet and her four children were resisting the urge to start crying. It's all right, children, Mrs. Cratchit soothed. Father will be back soon, and we'll have our Christmas food. There's only four kids. What happened to Tim? Scrooge started to plead. I told you to take me to him! With a flick of its wrist and a flash of great light, they both appeared before a truly sad sight. Standing before a grave with a tear in his eye, Bob Cratchit spoke as though he were about to cry. You were a wonderful son. Truly you were brave. I promise I'll keep visiting almost every day. With that, Bob Cratchit turned his head hung low and walked back home through the graveyard snow. Scrooge approached the grave and dropped to his knees. Little, little Tim died. Tell me I'm wrong, please. The spirit just stared, giving no pity. No words of relief or anything cheerful or witty. They just pointed towards a freshly dug hole, the sight enough to chill Scrooge's soul. He got up slowly and nervously moved to the pit, his nerves feeling so rattled he wet himself a bit. Is this the grave of the old wretch that people gave shame? The ghost only nodded. Well, what is his name? The spirit pointed towards the gravestone, 
only for Scrooge to see that the name was his own. Nobody's mourning! People said this was the answer to their prayers! Is nobody coming to grieve me? Are you saying nobody cares? At this point, the church bell began to toll, and with a shove, the ghost dropped Ebenezer into the hole. The coffin opened and trapped him inside. Scrooge began to call out, Let me out! I'm still alive! After shouting and banging, he kicked open the door and stumbled out of his wardrobe and onto the floor. It took Scrooge a moment to get his head straight. When he saw it was morning, he remembered the date. He declared, Christmas ghosts and Jacob, I'll make you all proud. This wretched old fool will turn his life around. Scrooge bounced to the window and opened it wide. I've had a change of heart. Merry Christmas, he cried. Scrooge then called to a boy walking past, saying, Boy, I have for you a very important task. Go to the butchers with a prize turkey out front and tell them to have it ready for me at once. Then Scrooge picked up the turkey and went into town, sharing smiles and laughter he saw all around. On his way to the Cratchit, he had to make a stop at Magnificent Michael's Wondrous Toy Shop. He bought boats and carriages and musical things. He bought spinning tops and cricket bats and a toy monkey that swings. He then made his way to the sweet shop where the owner nearly died of shock when Scrooge barged in and loudly announced that he would buy the lot. So he gave out the toys to every child that came to his sight and threw out sweets to passers-by to the left and to the right. Then he saw the two men that were asking for money for the poor. Scrooge called to them, I'm sorry about my horrid mood before. Come to my office on Monday and I'll give you a hundred guineas. I'll make that promise now, I'm feeling generously silly. Soon he found he was making a racket outside of the house of Mr. Bob Cratchit. Bob said, Mr. Scrooge, what's with all the fuss? It's Christmas Day and you've come to see us. Oh, Bob, said Scrooge, I've been an old twat. I've overworked you for years and now I see that. So, to make amends for being so murky, I have brought you and your family this fine Christmas turkey. And first thing on Monday, I'll make you sure that you're getting paid double the rate I paid you before. Before poor Bob Cratchit could comprehend what was going on, the kind old Scrooge dropped another truth bomb. And I never knew that Tiny Tim had the voice of an angel deep within him. It won't do much use for him to be ill, so I'll find you the best doctor in England as well. And don't you worry about any medical fee, it will all be covered exclusively by me. The Cratchits all smiled and gave the old man a hug. It was then no longer he called Christmas a humbug. He gave out toys to all the children in town, and always kept smiling, he no longer frowned. And he kept to his word, down to the letter, by treating little Tim to help him get better. He had dinner with the Cratchits every Sunday night, and brought joy to everyone he could for the rest of his life. So now, ends this story of newfound Christmas cheer. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next year.